there is a portion of this animation where the character tugs at the shorts in the crotch area. This is something that was in the reference of the animation I was using. It's a track and field star and she's hopping about and these are really tight attires. So sometimes they get stuck and they have to be yanked out, especially when they're moving so much. So I was trying to simulate that. Now, as is, when the animation plays and we get there, it isn't really clear what is happening. So I'm going to use a transform constraint to tug at this end cloth material to help make the animation feel realer. So let me try to get to that location, Let's see where it's at. Right now, the shorts are cached. When this system is set up, I will disable the cache or delete the cache and re-render. So it's right there and the character yanks over there. So I could parent the constraint to her hand, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna cheat and just have the constraint yank at that region. So let me start by selecting the parts where she should be yanking or something in that region around there. So I'm gonna pick about maybe four points here. It really could be one, two, but I think four should give us something that's thick enough to show the screen. Actually, I might do more than that. I'm gonna hit control period and grow the selection to about there. Maybe right there, okay? And then I'm going to go and cloth sorry and constraint and create a transform constraint and go create okay. so I'm just going to do right there in position and I'm going to do one for the other side too I'm going to select vertices it just needs to be in the vicinity I'm gonna hold down shift and grow my selection till I get a good chunk of the shorts and create another transfer constraint. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is when we get to this part, I'm gonna key the transform constraint to pull and make sure oh, these things are really hard to select. I always have a problem selecting it. So first thing I'm going to do is actually just disable them. Make sure they're not enabled. This is a keyable attribute. I'm gonna disable them. And then I'm interested in positioning them where the effect happens. So that's about here. So from here, I'm gonna start here right at frame 152. So frame 152, I'm going to select this constraint and key its position. And then I'm going to key its move to frame 157 where the hand is already all moved out and key it to about there. And set a key again on its position so that it's moving down, all right? I need it to move down, and that's about all I need. So move it down. Let me do the same thing for the other side. I'm going to select the constraint, put it in position, right there, 152, set a key, and go to 157. Let me go a little further just to offset the action a bit. So they both don't happen at the same time. I just need it about there. Let's set a key. So both of them now should be, should be moving like this, okay? Okay, so what I'm going to do is make sure that around here, Right before the yank or around here, I'm going to make sure I set a key with it disabled. Then I'm gonna come forward 
and enable it and set a key. Then when we, by the time we get, I want it to stay enabled to about there. So I'll set another key. And then right when she lets go, I want to disable it. So I'm gonna set another key so that it pops back. And that's what I'm hoping to get. So I've done it for this side. Let me do it for the other side. I'm gonna select that constraint. Make sure that at the time her hands are right there, I'm going to set a key with it off. Then right afterwards, I'm gonna set a key with it on. Then right at this point, I'm gonna set another key with it on, since it's like a Boolean value. And then here I'll set it off and set a key. Now to make sure this took, I'm gonna to go into the Windows, General Editors, or Animation Editors, Graph Editor. And I just wanna make sure that this enable is in fact being keyed off, on, on, off. And then I'll do the same thing, check the other side too. And yep, it's doing the same thing. Off, on, on, off, okay. So I'm hoping to see this work. So now I'm going to delete the cache for this short so we can actually attempt to react to this transform constraint. I'm going to go end cloth, delete cache, and I'll even delete the cache file. I'll go delete. Okay. So now I'm gonna snap this thing back to the core, and then I'm gonna run a simulation and come back and show you what is produced. So here's the final. It's happening if you watch really closely, but it's happening too quickly. So it's yanking at around there. Let's see if I can capture it. So it pulls. But by the time we get out there, it's, you can see the distortion over there of the transform constraint trying to do its thing. So in order to repair that, I have to ensure that the keyed animation has more time to do what it has to do. So I'm gonna select these two constraints. I'm gonna to go to Window, Animation Editors, Graph Editor, and I'm looking for all these keys at around 157. They need to be extended to live just a little longer. So I'm gonna give it maybe one, two frames. That might not be enough. And add one more. Okay, so about three frames to do the whole action. So let me get a blast and I'll be back with the results. Okay, here's the blast. A much better result. I turned on the dynamic constraints so you can see them in action. Obviously, uh, jean shorts wouldn't yank that far. You wouldn't be able to yank it that far, but this action is an integral part of this little snippet of the animation, so it's worth emphasizing. So this is just one way you can play with these constraints to animate the simulated clothing during animation. All right. I'm going to connect the meshes to it and see how it looks on the final mesh. I think it, it reads, All right. it could be better, but this is just a quick lesson. As I said in a previous lesson, I'm going to do a dance production course, or I mean a project it be like a more advanced course and I'll be trying things like this with something that is meant for production. So I'll be paying more attention to it and fine tuning it to work correctly. All right. I cached and isolated it so I can see how well it performs. There it is. So it's like a tug at the shorts and they offset nicely because of the way the keys were set. So it at least makes it make sense when the animation plays because right now it just 
the tug happens and there's no reaction. So this will help to make the final uh, playback look more real. Okay, so that's the bonus lesson. This is just a little test. I uh, can't wait to try more interesting things like this on that main dance project.